Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word, which is the truth. We receive your word written in our heart, written in our mind, and we thank you for the revelation of it. We have a ready reception to what's offered, and we're going to take hold of it to apply it in our life, and we will be doers of it, and it will bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you on very important subjects of, we talked about the heart, we talked about our soul, we talked about our mind. Today we're going to talk about the area of our will. Our will is so important. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, we have seen this scripture, the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Holy, talking about the whole person. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are a spirit, that's the real you on the inside of you. You have a soul made up of your will, intellect, and emotions, and you live in a physical body. We're specifically talking about the area of the will, and we need to set our will to choose the way of the Lord, to choose to do what He wants us to do. In first, over in Deuteronomy chapter 30, Deuteronomy chapter 30, See, the battleground with the enemy is in the area of the soul, as well as the battle that was waged between your spirit and your flesh, which has not been redeemed. There is a war that goes on. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, God says this, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Notice. You and I are to choose life. It doesn't automatically happen. We're to choose the way that brings life and blessing. At the same time, there is a way that brings death and cursing. And obviously, we're not to choose that. But it is possible for us to choose the way that brings death or brings cursing if we do not choose God's way. We're going to choose one or the other. You're not going to be sitting in the middle ground. If you're not choosing God's way, then you actually have chosen the wrong way, whether a person realizes it or not. It is important, of course, then, that we got to know God's way. Well, what do we need to do? We need to set our will that we're going to get the Word of God in us so we know the ways of the Lord. In Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, we come down here to verse 38, and it says, It came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, speaking of Jesus, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. She did the right thing. She sat at his feet. She heard the word of God, which is what she needs to, you need to hear. Martha was cumbered about much, much serving, came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful, full of care or anxiety is the Greek word, merimno, full of anxious and anxiety and concern, and troubled, get disturbed in the mind about many things. Don't let yourself get full of care, worry, and anxiety, or disturbed or troubled in your mind. He goes on and says, one thing is needful. Jesus said, one thing's needful. What do we need to do? Mary hath chosen that good part. What did she choose? She chose to sit at the Master's feet and to hear His Word. What do you and, you and I need to do? We need to choose what is important to God. We need to choose to sit at His feet and to hear His Word. Get His Word in you. You must choose to set time aside to study God's Word. If you just think that you're just, just going to work out for you, uh, you know, well, circumstances will work out so I'll get in the Word, you'll never get in the Word. The devil will work all kinds of circumstances and situations to try to stop you from getting the Word. You've got to set priority of getting in the Word. In Hebrew, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, 1 Peter 2, 2, it says, As newborn babes desire, this word desire means to long for or pursue. In a negative sense, it's the word for lusting after something that's forbidden. So it refers to like a strong desire. Well, this is in a positive sense. Have a strong desire for the sincere or unadulterated, pure milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby. God wants us to have strong desire. If you don't have strong desire for the Word, then we must be being influenced by the flesh or by the enemy. 
and we need to set our will that we are going to choose the things that God has. Your spirit has strong desire for the Word, therefore we need to follow what our spirit wants to do. Say, well, I don't feel that. It's not a feeling thing. Feeling comes from your emotions. Well, I didn't really think that in my mind. Well, that's just from a mental attitude or whatever might be going through your mind. Your spirit is always ready to choose the things of God. Therefore, you and I are going to do what His Word says. Every time we do what His Word says, we're doing what the Spirit would want to do because we have the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And it's always going to want to do things in line with the Word. Therefore, you and I are going to have strong desire and a longing for the Word of God so that we can grow. There's no way that you are going to grow up spiritually if you don't get the Word in you. Just because you've been a Christian for 20 years doesn't mean that, oh, I've been a Christian for 20 years, I'm spiritually grown up. No, time does not make growth. Growth occurs through the Word of God. There are some people that have been born again for two or three years that are much stronger spiritually than people that have been a Christian for 10 or 15 years. Why? Because they haven't gotten the Word in them. God wants you to grow in the Word of God and become spiritually strong. Over in Psalms, we see something else. Psalms 1, verse 2. His delight is in the law of the Lord. This is the one who's going to be blessed. And in his law does he meditate day and night. Your delight, your pleasure, is in the Word of God. Because what do you live by? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We live by the Word. The Word of God is our life. The Word of God is the source that brings all of his blessings and all the things that he wants to bring forth in us. Therefore, we must delight in the law of the Lord. Delight in His law. If you do so, then you're going to seek it. You're going to meditate in it day and night. It's going to be what you're thinking upon throughout your day. What's going to be the result? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth His fruit in His season. The fruit will come forth in its season through the word in you. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever He doeth shall prosper. We want to prosper in everything we do. How are you going to be able to do that? Because you have the Word before you. You are doing the Word when you're obeying what God tells you to do. He will bring forth prosperity and you will see great fruit come forth and you will not be withering in your life. In Psalms 112, Psalms 112, verse 1, Praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments. If you delight greatly in His commandments, you want to get them. You want to get this Word in you. You want to hear this. You want to do it. You want to apply it in your life. You realize His commandments are so important because that's what's going to bring life for me. So we must delight greatly. Set your will that I am going to choose to get in the Word of God daily. And that's not just talking about, well, I heard a few scriptures and that's it. No, you're going to study. You're going to study the Word of God. You're going to spend time in the Word of God. You're going to devour the Word. You're going to eat this Word. You're going to meditate. You're going to think on this Word. You're going to look up all these scriptures, and you're going to allow this Word to be written in you and bring revelation to you by the Holy Spirit. Set your will to choose to get in the Word of God. Over in Isaiah, chapter 56. So we're talking about setting your will. Your will is very important. You see, you can have a lot of knowledge, but if you don't set your will to do the Word of God, it isn't going to do you any good. You've got to apply the Word and put it into operation in your life. Lots of people got a lot of knowledge out there, but they haven't entered into things because they aren't setting their will to do the Word. Isaiah 56, verse 4, he says, Thus saith the Lord of the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Notice that phrase. Choose the things that please me. God wants you to choose the things that please the Lord. If you're going to choose the things that please the Lord, then you're going to do whatever His Word says. It means we're not going to do what we want to do. We're not going to have our agenda. Instead, we have His agenda. Again, notice that you and I must set our will to choose the things of the Lord. We see in Joshua, another scripture, in verse 24, verse 15. And this is a scripture for your household. In Joshua 24, verse 15, he says, It shall seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you'll serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, 
or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what you said. My house is serving the Lord. Now, what if you got some people in your house that don't want to serve the Lord? Well, you can't make them choose. But one thing you can, you can set the Word of God as the rule and authority over your house. And those that do not want to walk in it, you restrain them from doing evil, otherwise you'll be like Eli, and he ended up, his sons died, and he died. Judgment came. So we've got to put the Word of God first place in our house. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, because we're going to choose to serve Him. That's what God wants you. You set yourself to choose to serve the Lord, and do not compromise in your house. Do not compromise around family members. Do not compromise the things of the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 24, speaks of Moses. It says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused it. Oh, he could have had all this great wealth and power and riches and all these things being in this position, but he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because in Pharaoh's house, it was sin. They were walking in the ways of sin. Egypt is the type of the world. When you walk in the ways of the world, you're going to walk in the ways of sin. Instead, he had all this available to him, but instead he chose to suffer the affliction with the people of God instead of enjoying the pleasures of sin. You see, sin will be pleasurable for a season before it brings much destruction but it's a way that brings great destruction in your life. It is the way that's going to bring death instead of bringing life. We need to choose the things of God, even if it means suffering, affliction, persecution, pressure, rejection from people, all these things. We've got to choose the things that are important to God. So we need to set our will. I'm going to choose the way of the Lord, not the way of the pleasures of sin. Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 15. Butter and honey shall he eat, but that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. God wants to set our, our will. I refuse all evil. I refuse to give place to any evil in my life. I'm not going to give place to it. I'm not going to choose that way. Instead, I'm going to choose the good. you got a will. You can choose. You can't say, well, the devil made me do it. No, you let the devil work in you because you chose the way. He might have come at you, influencing you, but you can't blame it on the devil. You have a choice. You have to choose to obey him and yield unto him. Very important that we understand that, you know, the devil's not going to drive people to do things and blame it on him without them yielding their will, their will. You've got to choose the way of the Lord. Choose the things that are good. We know from Isaiah chapter 1, in verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Willing and obedient. Notice it's more than just being willing. I mean, that's, that's part of it, of course. You've got to be willing. You've got to have your will set, that I want to do what God wants me to do. But also, we need to be obedient, carry it out. It's one thing, well, I, I have, I'm willing to do this, but then you're not obedient. It's like the guy who says, I'm willing to be made willing, Lord. Essentially, he's saying, I don't want to obey you, but I want you to make me to be obedient. It don't work that way. That shows the fact that we have rebellion in our heart. We're not going to be, quote, willing to be made willing. If we're willing, then we should be choosing the things of the Lord. Willing, if you have a real willingness of heart and mind, you will be obedient. If you're willing and obedient. See, many people are, I'm willing, but they're not really willing. They say they're willing, but if you're willing, you're going to choose to do what God says. Well, I'm willing to be healed. I'm willing to be delivered. I'm willing to do such and such. Well, I'm willing to get my prayer language. Well, are you doing what the Word says so you will get it and starting to move forth on those things? Are you willing to start casting those spirits out? Are you willing to start uh, engaging in the warfare against the enemy? Are you going to, well, I'm willing to do it, but obedience is the key. Otherwise, we must be doing it. Willing is the guy who's got the word in him, so he knows what he's supposed to do. Obedient is when he decides he's going to do it and carry it out. 
What's going to be the result? You're going to eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, notice, refusing to do God's word is actually rebellion. You can, otherwise, you can't sit on any middle ground. You're either choosing his way or you're choosing the wrong way. Even if you're trying to sit in middle ground, well, I'm not choosing the wrong way, but I'm not doing, haven't chosen God's way. But from God's perspective, if you're not choosing God's way, you already have chosen rebellion because you're refusing to do what he says. What's going to happen? We're going to be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. it. In other words, God has given us his word, and he expects us to do it. And if we don't do it, then we're rebellious, and we are going to suffer the consequences. So it's very important that we set our will to choose the will of the Lord, to choose his way in every situation. We see in Proverbs chapter 1, down here in verse 29, it speaks of those who hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Notice, we choose the fear of the Lord when we act upon his word because we realize that if we don't do his word, we rebelled against him. We're going to get devoured. We're going to see curses come. Remember what the Bible says, that if you hearken diligently unto his voice, blessings come. But if you don't, that, that just means you, did, you didn't do what he told you to do. It's not you doing something bad. It's all about you not doing it. What happens? Then curses will come. We need to choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, they'll eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Yes, God will let us choose our own way and we'll eat the fruit of our own way. He does not usurp authority over anybody's will. We've got to set our will. He gives us the word. Now we're going to be willing and we're going to be obedient. We're going to choose the things that please the Lord. Well, what happened to these guys that didn't choose the right way? We see a statement over here in Isaiah chapter 65. Well, the first problem was that he spread his hands out to these people all the day. He called them a rebellious people. Why? They were walking in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. They were doing what they wanted to do. Again, we talked about this in the area of the mind. We can't walk after our own thoughts. We got to go after his thoughts, which is the way of his word. Otherwise, we are considered rebellious. Well, we come down in verse 12, and he says, Therefore, I'll number you to the sword, you all bow, shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, you didn't answer. When I spake, you didn't hear. But did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Do not choose the things that God doesn't delight in. If you choose things that are contrary to what he delights in, then essentially we have rebelled against him, and judgment will come. It is important that we have our will set. Now, this means that we're going to need a willing heart and a willing mind before him. We see in Exodus chapter 35 and verse 5. Here he says, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, and whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. Willing heart on the inside of you. You have a new heart, a heart now that is right with God. You should have a willing heart on the inside of you. At the same time, we should have a willing mind. We see over in 1 Chronicles, chapter 28, in verse 9, it speaks of the willing mind, where he says here about serving him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. A willing mind. God wants you to serve him. A willing mind. So we're going to have a willing mind. We have a willing heart on the inside of us. You say, well, what's the willing heart? That's where you have a desire on the inner man from within to want to do something. You'll see about that when we get over in Romans chapter 7 in a little bit, where he had the will, desire on the inside of him. That would be a willing heart. But he wasn't doing things because the flesh was dominating him instead of understanding that he had a will to choose from what was in his mind to do the things that God wanted him to do. So we not only have a willing heart, but we also must have a willing mind to do the things that God wants us to do. Now, important that we understand that you and I can choose to always do what God wants regardless of what state you're in. In Mark chapter 5, here's the man who had the legion of demons in him. When Jesus came over from the side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes, and he came out of the ships, and there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. 
He had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no not with chains. He'd been often bound with fetters and chains. The chains had been plucked asunder by him. The fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. This guy was totally bound by the demons that were in him. At the same time, does that mean he didn't have a will and he couldn't choose to do something? No. He was bound by the enemy. He couldn't get free from what they were doing. But nonetheless, he still had a will, evidenced by the next verse, or, well, two verses. <coughs> it says also, he was night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But look at verse 6. When he saw Jesus afar off, he saw Jesus. How do we see Jesus? Through the Word of God. When we see the Word, what did he do? This is the guy that's so bound. He ran and worshipped him. If this guy can run and come and fall down and worship Jesus, anybody can run to Jesus. I mean, somebody you're trying to get through the gospel to and they just won't respond, well, you know what the problem is. Don't think it's the devil stopping them. The devil is influencing them, but they have a will. They can choose to come to Jesus. If this guy could run and fall down to worship Jesus, any of us can run to Jesus at all times. We all have a will, and we can choose the way of the Lord. So at the point of his will, he did this. And of course, then he came, and what did Jesus do? He started casting the demon out of him. He commanded the spirit to come out of him, and uh, the demon, of course, spoke back through him about not being tormented. Of course, Jesus kept casting them out until the spirit came out, uh, spirits came out of him. And in verse 15, it shows the result. They came to Jesus, see him that was possessed with the devil, had the legion sitting, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. He got delivered. His mind was not right, but nonetheless, even someone whose mind is just totally overrun by these demons, they still have a will. Their will can choose the way of the Lord. Again, if this guy can choose the way of the Lord, anybody can choose the way of the Lord. Again, that's why we've got to get the Word into them and encourage them to choose the way of the Lord and choose to do what He says. We see in Mark chapter 10, See, Jesus is not going to usurp someone's will, authority over his will. We even see something very interesting here. In Mark chapter 10, in verse 49, this is again is the man who, if we go back here, the man who was blind, uh, blind Bartimaeus, in verse 46, sat by the highway. He's begging. When he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. By the way, it's Jesus the Nazarite not of Nazareth. I was doing a study on this. We'll talk about that at a later time we teach you on this. But it's not in the genitive. It's actually, and Young gets one thing right. It's the, there's not a genitive there, but he gets something wrong. It's not Nazar, Nazar, Nazarene. It's really the word that means a Nazarite, one separated. When he heard that it was Jesus the Nazarite, the separated one, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He's calling for him, setting his will. And, of course, they charged him to hold his peace, but he wasn't going to stop. Don't let anybody stop you from coming to receive the things of God. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called. They called the blind men, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he cast away his garment, means I'm not going to be blind any longer because they were required to wear a garment as being blind. He says, I'm, Jesus is my healer, and I'm getting rid of this thing. He rose and came to Jesus. Notice what Jesus said, first thing. Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? What will you? The word is thelo, which means will. What is your will? What will you that I do unto you? He wants to find out where is your will? Where is your will set? What do you want? What do you are going to choose? And of course he said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And he said, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole, because your will is involved in releasing your faith as you choose to do God's word and take hold of the promise of God. What will you? He's never going to usurp your authority. Always set your will that you're going to do the things that God wants, and you're going to take hold of what he has. Otherwise, it's not all whatever God wants to do. If God wants to heal me, he'll heal me. I've had people say that, or whatever he wants to do, or deliver me. No. That's never going to happen. You need to have the will to want to be delivered, healed, and, of course, obedient to do what he says. In Romans chapter 1, verse 15, Paul says this, So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. 
This word ready means ready and willing. So everything that we do, we need to get our will set that I'm going to do it. I'm ready and willing to do it. If you are ready and willing, your will set. You're prepared. You're, you're all ready to do what God wants you to do. If we're ready and willing, then we're going to be, for God's going to be able to use us. But if we're not ready and willing, if we're just kind of walking around doing whatever, are we going to be in a position to be used? No, because we haven't set our will and haven't gotten ready to do what he wants us to do. I'm ready and willing to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. So it's important we have our will set that we're going to preach the gospel to others. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we talked about this in the area of their mind, but this also involves a, ready, a willingness of mind ready to deal with what comes at your mind. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations, that's mental reasonings, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought, and we talked about this in the area of the mind, to the obedience of Christ. See, if we not, we would disobey, wouldn't we? You're either obeying or disobeying, one or the other, depending on what you're choosing. And having in a readiness, this is one who's prepared and ready, willing, his will set, I'm prepared, I'm ready to deal with everything that comes at me, to revenge all disobedience when all obedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. Notice it's tied in with obedience. Obedience is one who chooses to do what he's supposed to do, willing and obedient. He set his will. So you're going to set your will. I'm ready to take, cast down every reasoning. I'm ready to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I am ready to avenge all disobedience that would come against me from the enemy in any aspect when my obedience is fulfilled. I'm ready to obey. You see, your obedience shows whether your will is really set and whether you're going to carry out the things that God has told you to do. When we come over to Romans chapter 7, we mentioned about this earlier, we'd come to this. Here's Paul, and in Romans chapter 7, verse 15, an important passage of Scripture that we need to understand. He says, For that which I do, the things I'm doing, I allow not. For what I would, the word fellow, what I will, that do I not. I have this will on the inside of me of what I want to do, and where is this coming from? Within. He says, I'm not doing what I will. But what I hate, that do I. The, I'm doing things that I don't even want to do. Something's working against my will is what that's telling you. If then I do that which I would not or will not, I consent to the law that it's good. Now then, it's no more I that doeth, but sin that dwelleth in me. So he realizes there's something dwelling in me that's affecting me so I'm doing the wrong thing, even though I have the will present within me that is wanting to do the right thing. There's something dwelling in me, and it's sin. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, I'm not talking about in my spirit, and not in my soul or my mind, but it's in my flesh, and the human nature of this not been changed, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. Again, he's talking about, I got this will, and we'll talk about where that will is in a moment. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. I got this willing, but how do I do this? Because I'm doing the wrong thing, because something else is driving me from my flesh. For the good that I will, I do not. But the evil which I will not, not to do, I'm doing. For if I do that I will not, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He's repeating this. I find then a law that when I will to do good, literally is what this says, Evil is present with me. Hey, I have this willingness to do something, but evil's present. So you've got to understand, even though you say, well, I'm willing, but something else is trying to work against you. I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Where's the willing come from? It's coming from the inward man, which is what? The hidden man of the heart. In other words, your heart is willing. That's the inward man, and it has the will to want to do the right thing. And he delights in it after that. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Therefore, something is warring against my mind, and it was sin that was dwelling in his flesh. He says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He realized I got this body of death. 
that is working against me, warring against my mind. He comes down and says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he says, with my mind, I can serve the law of God, but at the same time, he has to make the choice. Just because he has something in his mind doesn't mean he's doing it. He has to choose with his mind to submit and serve the law of God. He has the willing desire from his inner man in the heart. But that doesn't mean that you're automatically going to do it. A lot of people say, well, God knows my heart. I have a willingness. And they're right in that sense, the fact that you know, a lot of times, sometimes they have an evil heart, but sometimes they really do have a willingness on the inside, but they're not doing it. Why? because they have not set their will to do their word of God, talking about your willing, from a willing mind standpoint, to choose to serve the law of God. They've not set their will to do what he wants. You've got to set your will. With my mind, I am going to serve the law of God. So with my will, I'm going to think with my mind, what does the word say? That's the way you set your mind to serve the law of God. That's why it's so important. If you are going to see your will be set to choose the way of the Lord, you're going to have to think in every situation, what does the Word say that I must choose to do? Because with my mind, I'm going to think on what the Word says, but then I'm going to choose to do that even regardless of what's coming against me from the flesh or from evil spirits that would be in me. So it's very important that you understand. You may have the will on the inside, but you've got to set your will your will of you in the soulish realm we're talking about, to choose the way of the Lord. There is a will from your heart, but there's also a will from the soulish area where you have a willing mind, that's your soul, choosing to do the things that God wants you to do. Now, in Philippians chapter 2, we see something further. Philippians chapter 2. Obedience is so important because obedience shows that you have set your will to choose what God wants. If we're not being obedient, then what does that tell us? We obviously have not set our will to do the things that God wants us to do. Philippians 2.12, Wherefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What was evidence that they were going to do this? If they would obey. As you always obeyed, in my, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Otherwise, easy to do it when I'm around. How about when I'm not here? Now, are you going to continue to obey? That shows that you've set your will to work out your own salvation, being obedient to do what he wants. And then he goes on and tells you, how is God working to accomplish this in you? The next verse says, For it is God which worketh in you, he's at work, operative, in work, at work, an active operation in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Or this means really means to put into operation and work of his good pleasure. So God is at work through his word to bring you to the place of willing and doing of his good pleasure. You see, if you don't have the word in you, you will not have that to be able to choose to do what God wants. Because you're not going to be able to fight the enemy just with your flesh. No, you're going to be able to deal with it through the Word. How did Jesus deal with the temptations the enemy brought against his will to choose the right way? The Word, right? It was the Word. He thinks, what's the Word say? It is written. He speaks the Word, choosing the way of the Word instead of choosing the way of the temptation that comes against him. So your mind renewed to the truth is one thing, which we've talked about. But now you need to set your will. That with my mind, thinking on what does the Word say I should do in this, I'm going to do the Word, I'm going to choose the Word, I'm going to speak the Word, I'm going to do what the Word says so that I always choose God's way and I don't let the enemy or the flesh get me to choose the wrong way. And the result of that is obedience to the Word at the point of your will and you're going to end up doing of his good pleasure. It has nothing to do with your feelings whatsoever. It's so important. You've got to set your will. For instance, let's give an example. Here, <clears throat> you've got a situation where you need to forgive someone because they did some evil things to you. Well, you have these feelings, so I don't feel like I want to forgive so-and-so. And you have these, these 
it's this will, you know, on the inside of you, you're, you know, you're, you have the word in you, it shows, hey, I'm supposed to choose to do this because I know the word says I should forgive. Well, what do you need to do in that situation? Your feelings are coming at you and I don't feel like forgiving them and thoughts are coming into your mind reminding you and memory recall of all these things, of all the things that they did to you and keeping this, keeping on stirring this thing up. You've got to choose at the point of your will to think, what does the word say? The word says I must forgive. I choose at the point of my will with my mind to serve the law of God and I choose to forgive that person regardless of whether I feel like it or what's going on in my mind. And I am going to choose to do what God wants and I'm not going to give place to the enemy. As you choose the word, God's at work to will and to do of his good pleasure through you, through your obedience. In doing so, you're working out your own salvation with fear and trembling and you're seeing God bring forth what he purposes in your life. If we don't do what he wants us to do, we are going to see judgment come upon us in some capacity. How do we know that? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 says, If we sin willfully, voluntarily, after that we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fire indignation which will devour the adversaries. In other words, once you have received the knowledge of the truth, the word has come to you. It's written in your heart, written in your mind. Now you have a responsibility to choose to obey and do what he says. Now God's at work to will and to do of his good pleasure, but you're going to have to choose to do what he says. If you reject doing what he says, then you will do something else and you will sin. And if you sin willfully, after you received the knowledge of the truth, after this you took hold of it, then you are going to see judgment come upon you. That's why we've got to set our will to do the things that God says. That's why, of course, we've got to really strive against sin. You cannot take a just kind of a whatever happens, happens attitude towards sin. No. You've got to take a real hard attitude against letting any kind of sin work at you in your life, or judgment's going to come. Hebrews 12.1 even says, Wherefore, seeing we're also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, <coughs> let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. That's what seems to cause us to trip up and fall time after time. Let us run with race, the patience, the race that's set before us. And he talks about down in verse 3 about how we're to consider him that endured such contradiction to sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your soul. This means, not minds, it's suke in the soulish realm. And that's where the battleground is with the enemy. And what includes your soul? Not just the, the area of what's going on in your mind mentally, but also your will. You can't get weary and faint in the area of the soul, which would include your will. Instead, he says, you've not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. So what kind of an attitude must we, must, must we take against sin? We're going to have to strive against it. We can't let our mouth sin. We can't let our mind sin. We can't let our actions show forth sin. We've got to strive, which means to struggle and fight against sin. Otherwise, we're going to choose to sin willfully, and what's going to happen? Now, then we're going to see judgments that come upon us. Very important. We've got to set our will to do the things that God wants. In Matthew chapter 7, in dealing with people here, in verse 12, it says, Wherefore, Therefore, all things whatsoever you would, this is the word thelo, what you will that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. See, you are to do to others what you would like to see them do unto you. As you do to others what you want them to do to you, you are sowing in the realm of the Spirit for God to bring that back unto you. Because as you give out, it will be given back to you. What happens if someone won't respond and do that? Well, they're going to sin and it's going to bring curses upon them. But what's going to happen? God is going to bring somebody else who is going to do the Word of God back to you. Because as you sow, you are going to reap. It may not be the person that you're ministering to at that point in time, but nonetheless, somebody else will. So it's important that you always give out what you will that men would do unto you. You don't want them to do evil to you. You want them to do good to you. So you're going to do good to people. You want them to love you. 
That's why you're going to love them. You want them to bless you. That's why you're going to bless them. You never do to people what you would not want them to do back unto you. That's why Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, we brought the scripture to you many times and bring it to you again. I say unto you, Jesus says, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. What are you doing? You're doing what you will for others to do unto you. You're sowing in the spirit, you're walking in love, you're doing what God would have you to do. And as you love God love is going to come back to you. As you bless, blessings are going to come back to you. As you do good, good things are going to come back to you. From who? From the Lord. Whether he uses that person or uses some other person or just however he does it. Whatever you're sowing, you're going to reap. You've got to understand. You give out, everything you give out is coming back to you. Which means if you're giving evil out, it's coming back to you. Don't think you're going to get away from it it's going to come back to you. And you're never justified to give out evil. You gotta set your will. I will always love, I will always bless, I will always do good, I will always pray for those that have done evil things. Very important that we set our will to always do the right thing. And you're, whatever you sow, you're gonna reap. If you'll keep sowing the right thing, you remember what the Bible says, God's not mocked what a man sows, he's gonna reap. You sow to the spirit, you're gonna reap uh, life everlasting, but if you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption, and you're going to see destruction come. In Luke chapter 9, in verse 23, Jesus makes this statement. He said to them all, if any man will, this is the word fellow, has the will, see, unfortunately, you kind of lose this when you read this, this, if any man will come after me, they think it just is the, the verb is come, but the verb is not come. I'll show you this when we bring this up. Here's the word will, fellow. It is an indicative mood, which means that's the general verb, present, active, indicative. That is the general verb. The word come, is it also the general word? No, it is an infinitive in the Greek. What's an infinitive? Infinitive means to something, right? To come. That's what it is in English. Same thing in Greek, it's translated that way. So you kind of lose what it's saying there because they didn't translate it quite accurately. It more accurately says, if any man will to come after me. Otherwise, his will is set. So it really is emphasizing the will, the choice that you're making. If any man wills to come after me, let him deny himself. That tells you something. You've got to set your will to come after Jesus. That means all these people that will not respond to the gospel, guess what? They're not yielding their will to the Lord. You can't make them yield the will to the Lord. You've got to sow the word in them and then let God get them to respond. You can lead them towards the way of the Lord, but they have to choose. That's why you can't make them do something. Don't get all upset about, I've been sowing the word, I wonder why they won't choose the right thing. They got a will. You can't, you, God's not gonna usurp authority over their will, you can't do something to make someone choose the way of the Lord. They have to choose it. Your job is get the word into them. If anyone wills to come after me, so we're going to will to come after him, let him deny himself. We're going to deny ourselves. We're going to take up our cross daily, which is to crucify on the flesh, and we're going to follow after him by doing his word. Remember we talked about this before. Whoever will save his suke life that is the life affected by your will, intellect, and emotions. I'm going to choose to do what I want to do from my own soul, irrespective of considering God's word. He's going to destroy it. Why? Because you're going to walk in the flesh. You're going to walk in sin. You're not going to walk according to the word because you haven't thought, what does the word say? And if you don't think about what the word says, then you're walking in the flesh. But whosoever will destroy, Apollo me, his suke, I'm going to destroy this soul realm directed life, including my will doing whatever I want to do. For my sake, the same shall save it. In other words, we're going to submit our will to the Word of God and choose to do the things that God wants us to do. And that is very important. See, that's exactly what Jesus did every place that he went. <coughs> in fact, in John chapter 5, 
many people think that Jesus just came and, oh, he was, he was God, and so he just came and did all the things that he wanted to do. He did nothing that he wanted to do because he came as a man, did not operate as God. He was God and man, but he took upon himself like sinful flesh, and he had to oh, follow the way of the Father directing him. He says in John 5, verse 30, I can of mine own self do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment's just, because I seek not mine own will. That means you can't seek your own will. It means what's your will for? Your will is not to decide what I want to do. Your will is for you to set your will to submit to the Word of God, which is going to be from your mind renewed to the truth, your mind thinking on what the Word says, and then choose at the point of your will to do the Word of God. This is where your will comes in. You've got to set your will that I'm going to submit it to God's Word and walk in the way of the Spirit. He says, I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. If Jesus didn't seek his own will, you and I can't seek our own will. If he had to seek the will of the Father, and how did he do that? What does the Word say? Directed by what the Father told him to do. How are we going to walk in his ways? We're going to, again, think what the Word says and choose to submit our will, or with our will, our minds, to do the things that God wants us to do. And that is imperative if you're going to walk in his ways. We see in, in John chapter 6, you've got to understand what's your will for. Your will is for choosing. Well, what does God expect you to do with your will? Submit it to his word and choose his way. If not, you're running the show from a soul realm. John 6, 38. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Essentially, that says you don't do what you want to do. You do what God wants you to do. All the things that God places in your heart, the things that he has gifted you, talents, abilities, raised you up to do, whatever thing, profession he's put you in, whatever it might be, whatever he has for you, you do it, as well as doing the word of God. You're going to follow after the will of the person who sent you, and you're going to be obedient to all the things that he told you to do. God wants you to set your will. Remember, even when he went to the cross, what did Jesus do? In Matthew chapter 26, here he is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's got this great pressure coming against him because he's about to go to the cross. Here he's going to go through the ab and be die on the cross, a terrible thing, being made sin. And here he's praying. And in verse 39, he says, He went a little further, fell on his face, and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup, what cup was he about to drink? The cup of death. If there's any way of accomplishing this without going through death, let this cup of death pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. He still was consistent of submitting his will, not what I want. And that's going to be the key. The key to you walking with the Lord is you can't do what you want. Your will is given to you to submit to do what God wants so that then God can flow through you as you choose his will to accomplish what he purposes in you and he's going to bring all kinds of blessings. He's going to bless you. He's going to keep you from evil. He's going to accomplish all the great things he wants in your life and bring the promises of God to pass and it will of course be fulfilling and blessing in you. Verse 42, he goes on again. He went away the second time, prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, this, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. He was submitted to do the will of the Father. And that's where you and I must get to that place. Now, at the same time, you can be willing to do something, but never carry it out. Lots of people have good intentions. Well, I, I have good intentions, and I, I really want to do such and such. I have my will set to do this. But... We must also be obedient and carry it out. Matthew 21, 28 says, What think ye? A certain man had two sons. Notice this. He says, And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. He didn't set his will. He resisted. He was rebellious. But afterward he repented, changed his mind, and decided to obey at the point of his will, and he went. He didn't start out right, but at least he got on the right track and he chose the right way. The next guy, 
came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. My will is to go. I have a will to go. But he went not. He didn't carry it out. Good intentions don't make it. Good intentions is the first step, but we got to carry it out. Because it goes on and says, Which of them twain did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto the publicans and the harlots, Go into the kingdom of God before you. Why? Because they were following the will of the Father. They were responding to him, responding to Jesus. So, you can't have just good intentions. That doesn't make it. That's the guy again. I'm willing, but I never quite do it. If you, ha you have a will that is expected to set your will to choose the things that God has for you. Now, we see another scripture speaking about our will <clears throat> in Luke chapter 19. And one of the reasons why a lot of people reject Jesus. Luke chapter 19, verse 12. A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Who's that speaking of? Jesus coming to get his kingdom and return. He called his ten servants, delivered them ten pounds, said, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message to him saying, We will, fellow, we will not, literally, this is the main verb, we will not to have, we will not to have this man, that's essentially the way you would, you would translate this, to reign over us. We will not have this man, or will not to have this man to reign over us. See, you have to understand that if you come to Jesus Christ, you just don't come and get your ticket to heaven and get, you know, now I'm going to be, you know, not go to hell, praise God, I'm going to escape that and think that you can just go your own way. This has been a wrong gospel, a wrong way of presenting the gospel in the world, and especially in this country. No, when you make Jesus Lord over you, and if he's Lord over you, he's going to reign over you. Otherwise, it's not just give me my ticket so I escape the, the fires of hell throughout for eternity. It's making him Lord over your life. And he's going to reign over you, which means you've got to totally submit your will unto him. See, that's what needs to be presented. Don't just try to be so quick to get someone to pray a quick prayer and think that they're saved and they're born again and everything, and then they just go back to living their life and they think they're okay. That's a mistake. No. You're going to have to make him Lord, and he's going to rule and reign over you. You're going to submit and start walking his ways. You can enter into a covenant relationship with him. And how do you see covenant promises come to pass? Well, you've got your part to play, and he's got his part to play. If you don't carry out your part, are you going to see him carry out his part, his promises? No, it's not going to happen. So we've had this, this easy grace, easy get me to heaven type of thing, just sign on the dotted line and everything's great. No. When you present the gospel, you receive Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. You are covenant and covenant relationship with him. You are now going to have Jesus reign over you. Of course, the other thing you tell him is the devil's been reigning over you up till now, whether you realize it or not. And you don't want to let him rule and reign over you because you're not reigning in your own life. You're, someone else is ruling and reigning over you. Some spiritual authority is. That's what needs to be presented to them. But he says, we will not have this man to reign over us. Well... We've got to realize we've got to let Jesus rule and reign over us and put him first place in our life by doing what his word says. At the same time, some people, they really, even people that come into positions of uh, ministry and so forth, they never set their will a lot of times to really do what God wants because they really are in it for whatever all their purposes are and they're kind of still running the show themselves. Beware of the scribes. Oh, these are the guys that supposedly were, you know, had it all together, they had all the word, knew all the stuff. Which desire, or have the will, fellow, which will to walk in long robes. Because so they'd be seen as some spiritual thing. Love greetings in the markets, the highest seats in the synagogues, and the chief rooms at the feasts. These guys, will was to be seen of men to get all this from men. Give me the good seats. Give me the honor, all this stuff. No, all the honor and all the glory goes to Jesus. You don't seek honor and glory in your own life. If so, you, your will, is not set correctly. All these people that would seek anything which brings glory or honor to you, 
That is a wrong motivation of will. That shows their will is not right. And that was the problem with these guys. They never submitted their will. And of course, would they receive the Lord? No, they never received the Lord. Instead, they chose to walk his ways because they did not want to submit unto the Lord. See, we've got to submit ourselves unto the Lord and begin to do the things that he wants us to do. At the same time, when you begin to live according to God's ways, you will be persecuted. The devil will bring people against you. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, all that will, fellow, will to live. See how Young's translates this? Who will to live. You see, again, you lose what the will is all about when you kind of read through this, that will live godly. You think that the verb is, is, is live. And you think will is just like in the English, a helping verb, you know, will help, will do something, like it's a future thing. No, this is the main verb. All that will set their will to live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Again, the point is you're going to set your will to do what God wants, and we're going to live godly. Of course, that's very important. You've got to set your will to, I'm going to live godly. I'm going to always do what God wants. I'm not going to compromise. If you don't set your will to live godly, then people can easily get you, kind of knock you off track, and you can easily fall into things because you didn't really set your will. You were kind of just going along with the flow, and something comes along and, and gets to you because you weren't set. That's why we got to be prepared and ready, and our will's got to be set to do what God wants in every situation. And of course, you will get persecution. It'll come along the way. Hebrews chapter 13. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 18. <clears throat> Pray for us, he says, for we trust that we have a good conscience in all things willing, fellow, to live honestly. Or this really means excellently, not just honestly, but excellently, in an excellent manner, which would be according to the word. Willing to live excellently before God. Set your will. I am going to live excellently before God. I am going to live the way he wants me to live. Also, we see in 1 Peter chapter 3, got to set our will. Verse 10, he says this, He that will love life, again you lose it here, He that wills to love life, as willing to love life, love is an infinitive again. Again, I'm pointing this out to you, but I'll just show you so you can see it. It's an infinitive, not the main verb. It's an infinitive. He that wills, emphasizing the will in the Greek, he that wills to love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. In other words, you've got, to let, make, you've got to set your will that I'm going to refrain my tongue from speaking evil things. No, my tongue is not going to speak evil. And my lips are not going to speak any guile or anything that's deceitful. No, I'm going to set my will that I am going to speak good things and then I'm going to see good days, and I'm going to be one who's going to love life. You see, it's important that we are setting our will, but also we must be obedient. It's essential to be obedient. Even if you've been taught and trained in the ways of the Lord, it will do you no good unless you choose. Set your will to obey. Joshua 5, 6, look what it says. The children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war. These guys were men of war. I mean, they got trained up in the way of warfare, which came out of Egypt, which is a type of the world. That would refer to a type-wise that we've a person who's been born again, come out of the world, trained up in the ways of spiritual warfare. They were consumed. They were trained up in this stuff. They were men of war. Why? Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Obedience. If your will is really set, you are going to obey. You will do what he wants. In other words, and what's that going to produce? Fruit in your life. So your will really being right is, remember, your will is to do what? Submit to what God wants, thinking what his word says, not what you want. And your will is also to be set to do his word and obey and carry out the things that he tells us to do. Very important that we set our will. If not, 
It's, of course, it's going to be shown by your level of obedience. If not, you'll continue to walk in the ways of defeat. 1 Peter 1, 14, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former loss in your ignorance. Not fashioning. So here we can't be walking our lusts in our ignorance when we didn't have knowledge. No, we're to be obedient. How are we going to be obedient? Because now we do get knowledge through the Word. But getting knowledge is one thing. Again, many people have knowledge, but what are you doing with the knowledge? Are you setting your will to choose the way of the Lord and to do what He says? It's not a matter of just being a knowledge factory, you know. Sure, your mind's got to get renewed to the truth, but you've got to choose to do what He says, that you will bring forth fruit, and that is going to show forth that you are really walking in His ways. In fact, what's the proof of you? Quite a statement made here in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, over here in verse 9. This is quite a statement. It says, To this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, the proving. I want to know the proof of you. Let's find out proof about you and your life, whether you're doing what I say or not, whether you be obedient in all things. What's God's proof of you? The level of obedience. In the measure you're obedient is the measure that your will has chosen the things of God, and that's the proof of you walking in the ways of the Lord. Little obedience, little walking in the ways of the Lord. Little proof. No, we want to show the obedient in all things. That's what God has for every single one of us. See, that was the thing about David. David was committed, even though he made mistakes along the way. He numbered the people, remember, when he shouldn't. He got off track with Bathsheba. But one thing about David, he did repent, and his will was set to do what God wanted to do. Acts 13, 22. When he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. He would do it. God's looking for those who will fulfill his will. Will you fulfill his will in your life by working out your own salvation, by doing what the word of God says, by choosing the things that he says we're to choose? Choosing the things that please him, choosing the things that he delights in, choosing the good, refusing the evil, making the right choices that God has for you, it is essential. In 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, over here in verse 15, talking about the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Don't get your eyes on this. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. How does it all work? What I see, what I want, you know, through what I feel and desires I have from the flesh. And the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. You don't want any of that stuff. The world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth, the will of God abideth forever. The one who does the will of God, what's he done? He's chosen to yield his will. He's chosen to yield his will to do the things that God wants him to do. That is what God wants for you and for me. We've got to set our will. We've, entered, we've talked about that this, so far this morning. We've got about just as much to talk about tonight and bringing forth more about setting our will. What we've seen this morning, God has given you, you have a spirit, soul, and body. You got born again, you got a new spirit that's right with him. You got a new heart as well. Your heart wants to do the right thing. Now you can't let evil come into your heart that'll really mess things up, but your heart, if you have it right before God, will want to do the things that God wants. Your soul is made up of your will, intellect, and emotions. As you get the word in you and your mind is being renewed to the truth, and you reason now from your intellect, and you choose with your will, your will is very important to set your will, that I'm going to choose the things that God wants. He has set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He will not usurp authority over your will. We need to choose the things. He's not going to make you do things. He's given you what he says, directing you what to do. Now you've got to choose to do it. 
Mary chose the right path to get in the Word of God. We need to choose the things that please Him. We need to choose to serve Him. We need to choose to suffer affliction rather than the pleasures of sin. We need to choose the good and refuse the evil. We need to choose the fear of the Lord to do what He wants us. We need to choose the things that He delights in. We need to choose to be willing and obedient if we're going to eat the good of the land. We need to choose to do what God wants regardless of what the situation is. And it doesn't matter what your situation is, how bad your circumstances are, you can always choose to run to Jesus. The man from Gadara, he, had, he was in bad shape, cutting himself in the tombs, running around with no clothes, totally out of control, banished to the tombs, minds totally run over by the demons, yet he still could choose to run and fall at Jesus' feet and worship him so he could get delivered. God will always come to you. What, what do you will? That's what he said to the man in blind, blind man. What will I do to you? Your will is set. You set your will to put your faith in operation to receive everything that God has for you, and which means you're going to have to do exactly what he says. We're also to be ready and willing to preach the gospel. We're going to be ready and willing to take our thoughts captive. We're going to be ready with our will to choose with our, with our mind to serve the law of God instead of letting our flesh dominating us. Even though you have a will on the inside of you to will to do something, but the things warring against the law of your mind through the flesh, you have a will if in your soul. See, there's a will from the heart, but there's also a will in the soulish realm. You really have two wills in a sense. A willing heart, will on the inside of you, the hidden man, but you also have a will in the soulish realm that you can choose, because you can choose to have a willing desire, just like he said in Romans 7. I have a will to do what's right, but I'm not doing it. Why? Because he was not letting himself be governed by the flesh, warring against his mind. And he wasn't setting his will from the soulish realm to choose with the mind to serve the law of God. That's why you've got to always think. How do you do that? What does the Word say? That's what your, your mind says with your will. What does the Word say? And I'm going to choose to do what the Word says. It doesn't matter what I think, what I feel, what the circumstance is. I'm going to choose the Word. So we're going to do that. If we, of course, obey, that shows we chose the right way. Your obedience shows the right choices. If we don't, if we do things that are wrong, we sin willfully, judgment is going to come. We must set our will to do what He wants. And remember, time and time again, if any man will to do such and such, will to love life, will to see good days, will to come after me, will all these things, and we saw the emphasis of that, and you'll see more of those scriptures tonight when we talk about this, we're going to have to choose to do what he wants. And we can't be one of those guys that has good intentions. Well, I'm willing, and then never do it. The other guy, he didn't start out right, but at least he changed his mind, and then he got forth, went forth, and he says, I will, and he went forth, and did it. We're going to have to set our will to do all the things that God wants. And remember that what's the proof of you? Obedience in all things that shows that you and I are choosing the way of the Lord. Which means you and I have no excuse for not choosing the way of the Lord. Well, why aren't I doing such and such? I'm not choosing to do such and such, obviously. Now, it may be because I don't have the knowledge of God. We need the knowledge of God so then that we can choose the way of the Lord. If we don't have the knowledge of God, how are we going to choose something if we don't know it? That's why it's important to get your mind renewed. But once you get your mind renewed, now there's another step. Let's choose to do all the things that God says with my mind to serve the law of God in obedience to what He says. As we set our will to choose to obey God and do what He says in every situation, then we're going to see, being a doer of the Word, we're going to bring forth fruit. We're going to conquer sin. We're going to overcome all the enemies. We're always going to choose the right way. We're never going to have any problems in relationships. We're going to always love and bless and do good and pray for them. We're going to always follow the Lord. So your will is extremely important. And what God is saying to you and to me today is, set your will to choose the way of the Lord. Say this to me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father in, the Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, I thank you. that you've given me a free will. It is my responsibility to choose the way of the Lord. I understand you don't usurp authority over my will. I have to choose. So I am setting my will this day to choose the way of the Lord. 
my mind being renewed to the truth, I will think in my mind, what does the Word say, so that then I can choose the way of the Lord. And I will choose to do what your Word says in every situation. I do not seek my own will. I do not walk after my own will. But I walk after the will of God, which is His Word. So as I am obedient, doing the Word, that shows that I've chosen your way. This day, I set my will before you, Father, to choose your way, evidenced by my obedience, which is the proof of me as I'm obedient in all things. Thank you, Lord. There's going to be much fruit because I'm setting my will. I'm only choosing what's right in your sight from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now you do that, you get your will set, you're on track. But again, that's why our mind's got to get renewed. But then we've got to have our will set. It's your soul. And emotions-wise, you just got to shut that down. You can't trust your emotions. Well, I, don't, I feel like such and such. Your emotions are going to take you every which way because they're all the voice of the flesh. You never can trust your flesh. And we'll be talking about that. That'll be coming up in another message. We're dealing with each one of these areas that are so critical and important for us to walk with the Lord. Because you've got, you got a mind. You've got a will. You've got emotions. You've got a flesh. You've got... You know, all these things you've got to deal with. You've got all your faculties. So we've got to learn to deal with these things, which the Word instructs us, so that we walk in the way of the Lord. And then we're going to see great fruit. And we're going to walk in the Spirit. We're going to please God. We're going to walk in victory. We're going to see His blessings. We're going to see His promises. And there's going to be great victory in your life as you choose the way of the Lord. Father, thank you for all you brought forth. We'll be hearers and doers of your word as we set our will to choose your way. Thank you, Lord. We're not going to choose the wrong way ever again. We're going to choose the things that please you and be obedient in all things. Thank you. There'll be much fruit as we choose your way, setting our will in Jesus' name.